Okay, so in today's video we want to look at further um, problems involving anti-differentiation. Um, so sometimes it's really just about the interpretation of what the question's saying. There's no new skills here, no new math skills. It's just about working out what the question's actually asking you to do. Um, okay, so example one, the gradient at any point um, with coordinates of x, f of x, um, on the curve with equation y equals f of x, okay, so that's where, you know, this is just x, y, um, is given by 4x minus x squared. Find f of x if the curve passes through 3, 5. Okay, so let's read that sentence properly. The gradient at any point is given by this. Okay, so this is the derivative. f dash x is equal to 4x minus x squared. That's what the first sentence is telling us. The derivative is 4x minus x squared. We want to find f of x if the curve passes through the point 3, 5. Okay, so we want f of x, which we know is the antiderivative of the derivative. So it's going to be the antiderivative of 4x minus x squared. So antiderivative of 4x is 4x squared on 2, this is x to the 1, minus x squared becomes x cubed on 3, and then adding c. Okay, but we've got a point. We know that the curve passes through the point 3, 5. So f of 3 equals 5. And so we know that f of 3 is going to be, sorry, let's just simplify this first. So that's 2x squared minus um, x cubed on 3 plus c. Okay, so f of 3 is 2 times 3 squared minus 3 cubed on 3 plus c. Um, and that equals 5. Okay, so x squared is 9 times 2 is 18, minus 3 cubed is 27 on 3 is 9, plus c, and that equals 5. So 9 plus c is 5, and therefore c is negative 4. And so therefore f of x, find f of x, so answering the question, f of x is equal to um, 2x squared, minus x cubed on 3, you can write that as 1 third x cubed, and minus 4 for the constant. So it's really just a problem, you know, find, finding the constant of integration, but it's just about being able to interpret what that first sentence is saying to you. The gradient at any point on the curve y equals f of x is given by 4x minus x squared. So the derivative of f of x is 4x minus x squared. Alright, example 2. The graph shows dy dx against x for a certain curve with equation y equals f of x. Find f of x given that the point 1, 1 lies on the curve. Okay, so 1, 1 lies on the curve, not on this line. This line is the derivative, okay? So this is dy dx compared to x. All right, so if we think about, um, so if we can come up with the equation for this line, that's equal to the derivative. That's equal to dy dx, okay? So we know that normally for a line it's y equals mx plus c, but that's when this axis represents y. So this is dy dx equals mx plus c. So we can work out the gradient here. We know that the gradient is going to be rise over run, so gradient is going to be 2. And we also know that the y-intercept is 2. So the derivative is 2x plus 2. Okay, so then we want to find um, f of x. If, um, so y equals f of x and um, the graph is dy dx, so the derivative of f of x. Okay, so we know that the derivative of f of x, f dash x or dy dx in this case, is 2x plus 2. Therefore, f of x is going to be the antiderivative of 2x plus 2. Antiderivative of 2x is 2x squared on 2, so it's going to be x squared. Antiderivative of 2 is 2x and plus c. So this is x squared plus 2x plus c. And once again, we know that the point 1, 1 lies on the curve. So we know that f of 1, which is going to be 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus c, we know that that equals 1. So that's 1 plus 2, so it's 3 plus c equals 1. And so c is negative 2. And so therefore, again, find f of x. Make sure we answer the question. Therefore, f of x is x squared plus 2x plus c, which is negative 2. Alright, and then example 3. The curve y equals f of x, for which f dash x is equal to k minus 3x, where k is a constant, 
has a turning point at 1, negative 3. Find the value of k. Okay, so have, knowing that there is a turning point at 1, negative 3 tells us two bits of information. We know um, when x is 1, so f of 1 equals negative 3. Okay, and we know there's a derivative at 1. So the, no, sorry, we know there's a turning point at 1, so f dash at 1, the gradient at 1 will be 0. And so it's going to be this second bit of information that allows us to find k. So we know f dash x is k minus 3x, and we know that f dash at 1, which would be k minus 3 times 1, is equal to 0 because of the turning point. So k minus 3 equals 0, and so k equals 3. Find the coordinates of the point at which the curve meets the y-axis. So before we can find the y-intercept of the curve, we need to find the equation of the curve. Okay, so we need to find the original curve. We have the derivative of the curve, so we want to anti-differentiate that. Um, the derivative is k minus 3x, um, but we've now worked out that k is 3, so it's 3 minus 3x. So anti-differentiating that to get the original function, anti-derivative of 3 is 3x, anti-derivative of 3x is 3x squared on 2 plus c. Um, and then again we know that f of uh, 1 equals negative 3, okay, we've got that from the point. So f of 1 is equal to 3 times 1 minus 3 times 1 squared on 2 plus c, and we know that equals negative 3, sorry. So that is 3 minus 3 on 2 plus c equals negative 3. 3 minus 3 on 2, that's 3 on 2. It's 3 minus, it's 3 minus 1 and a half, which is still 1 and a half plus c, which is negative 3. So c is negative 3, take away 3 on 2. Negative 3 is negative 6 on 2, take away 3 on 2, so that's negative 9 on 2. Okay, And so therefore, f of x is 3x minus 3x squared on 2, minus 9 on 2. And um, the y-intercept, therefore, is f of 0, because it asks us, find the coordinates of the point where the curve meets the y-axis, so that's the y-intercept. Okay, We want coordinates as our answer. So f of 0 is going to be 0 minus 0 minus 9 on 2, so the y-intercept therefore has coordinates of 0, negative 9 on 2. Okay, So again, making sure that you have answered the question. Find the coordinates, make sure that your final answer is a set of coordinates. So that's where you should always make sure that once you've answered a question, you go back and read the question. You know, you might have stopped here. Go back and read it, find the coordinates. Oh, I should have coordinates. What do I need to do? How do I get to those? Okay. All right. And example four, the final example. The curve for which dy dx is equal to 2ax, where a is a constant, is such that the tangent at 1, negative 1 passes through the origin. Find the value of a and hence find the equation of the curve. Okay, so again, there's, the math of this isn't difficult, but there's lots of information here and it's about deciphering what it is telling you. Okay, so the key thing here is that a is a constant, so your derivative is just a number times x. So your derivative is a straight line, which means that your original function is some sort of parabola. Okay, so we're going to have some kind of parabola and we know that the parabola definitely goes through the point 1, negative 1. Um, so let's, uh, no, it's not going to be there. Let me think about it. It's going to go through the point 1, negative 1. Okay. And we know that the tangent at the point 1, negative 1, goes through the origin. Okay. So that's what we know is happening. So, therefore, we know that the gradient of this tangent is negative 1, okay? Your rise over your run, that's negative, you know, goes down and it's 1 over 1. So your gradient is negative 1, which means the gradient of the tangent is negative 1. That means that the gradient of the curve at this point is negative 1, okay? So it means that dy dx is negative 1 when x is 1. So at that point. We meet the where we, where the tangent is, so that's going to allow us to find a. Okay, so that's going to allow us to do the first part of the question. So we know when x equals one, dy dx 
is negative 1. Okay? And so this means that negative 1 is equal to 2a times 1. So I'm just substituting that information into this dy dx equals 2ax. Okay? So negative 1 equals 2a, and so a is negative a half. So that's the first part of the question. Find the value of a, and hence find the equation of the curve. Okay, so now we know that our derivative is equal to 2ax, so it's actually just equal to negative x, and so therefore y will be the antiderivative of the derivative. Antiderivative of negative x, the negative out the front, is just, that's just negative 1 times x, so it doesn't affect the anti-differentiation. So it's still going to be negative x squared on 2 plus c. And then we've got our point when x equals 1. Sorry, I should have left us some more space here. When x equals 1, y is equal to negative 1. And so we put that in, so negative 1 equals negative 1 squared on 2 plus c. So negative 1 equals negative half plus c. So c is negative 1 plus a half, which is negative half. And so therefore the equation of the curve is y equals negative x squared on 2 minus half. Or obviously you could choose to write that as, you know, negative half times x squared minus one, uh, plus 1, or however you want to write it. Okay. So the equation of the curve here and the value of a here. Going back to my question, checking that I've given everything in the form I need to, find the value of A, hence find the equation of the curve. I've done those two things. So again, the maths isn't difficult. It's about interpreting how you can use the information that you've got. So the fact that you know that the tangent goes through the point 1, negative 1 and the point 0, 0 allows you to work out the gradient of the tangent, which means you know the gradient of the curve at the point, which means you can then find A. And once you've got A, you've got the derivative and then you can find the function. Okay, so the work today is from exercise 17E, um, questions 5 to 14.